If you've been playing LEGO Fortnite for a while, I'm sure at one point you've tried to build a road or a bridge or a monorail to get from one place to another faster. If you have, I'm also confident that you've been frustrated that you could either not get the direction to line up or the places you're trying to connect are not at the same elevation and you end up building ramps and elevators to connect everything. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can change both the direction and the slope of your build so that you don't need to add connecting bridges or elevators. This will be an intermediate level tutorial, so if you're not familiar with directional building, you may want to check out one of my earlier videos to get some practice before you tackle this one. This is my shore village, and although it looks picturesque, one thing is glaringly out of place. I'm going to replace this monorail and elevator that connects with my desert village with one that ends at the top of the hill rather than 30 meters in the air. The first thing to do is set a marker at the bottom of the elevator where I want my monorail to end. I'll head over to the desert village because it's easier and safer to start from a high elevation and work down to a lower elevation, but I'll have an example on how you can build upwards at the end of this video. Although I'm going to construct a monorail in this tutorial, the principle is the same whether you're building a bridge or a road or a monorail. The current monorail is already set a few degrees to the left of the snap grid. So for this tutorial, I'll destroy the existing rail line and the station flooring so I can show you how to set the direction from scratch. The first thing I'll do is set a pillar roughly where I want my monorail to start. I'll move back a couple meters and nudge a second pillar back and forth side to side until both pillars are closely in line with the white marker I placed at the other end. Once the pillars are in place, I'll lay down a dynamic platform that's long enough to reach between both pillars and then I'll push it up against them. I'll connect a second dynamic platform so it's easier to make small adjustments to the direction. I'll add a foundation block to raise it to eye level and a piece of rustic thin flooring because it has a small groove down the center that helps with the aiming. I'll look down the flooring and see if the dynamic platform is aligned with the marker. You can see that it is slightly to the left of where it needs to be. So I'll set a couple pillars on the opposite side where I think it will line up better and push the dynamic platform against it. You may need to add a bit of flooring as a step if you can't see over the top. This time, everything lined up perfectly, but if it didn't, you'll need to repeat this step until the dynamic platform lines up with the marker. Now we can set the direction. Add another foundation block to raise the height and add another piece of flooring on top of that so it hangs over one edge. Select the pillar and with your crosshair on the underside of the flooring, nudge the pillar out from underneath the dynamic platform so it's not touching any part and then snap it in place. I like to put something on the pillar so I know not to destroy it when I'm done. More than once I've gotten carried away and smacked the pillar I just set and had to start all over again. Now that we have the correct direction, let's work on getting the slope. I'll start by placing my crosshair on the directional pillar and setting a 4x16 foundation block in line with where the monorail will be. Since my beach village is far enough away, the slope won't be that steep, and I'll only set one more foundation on top of the first one. If you're making a steeper slope, you may need to add more foundations. I'm going to repeat this two more times so I'll have a long stable base for the dynamic platforms. On the side farthest away from where the monorail will start, I've placed three pieces of 16 by 2 by 1 flooring for each foundation block. Since I have two foundation blocks, I'll set six pieces of flooring. I'll offset these pieces from each other by a couple spaces, alternating back and forth on each side so we can easily identify each piece of flooring and they'll be easier to break later on. I will set three long dynamic platforms on top of the foundations, making sure they're supported at each end so it doesn't tip over. The number of dynamic platforms you need depends on how steep your slope is. For long distances like this one, three platforms works well, but if you're making a steeper slope, you may want to only use one or two. With the platforms all connected, we can now remove the foundations so the end closest to the shore village drops to the ground leaving the platform supported only on the end with the 16 by 2 flooring. You want to make sure when you look down the dynamic platform, you can see the bottom of the marker is higher than the end of the platform. If not, you'll need to destroy the farthest platform to increase the angle. One at a time, destroy the top piece of flooring and look down the platform to see if the bottom of the marker lines up with the slope of the platform. Keep doing this until the slope of the platform lines up with the marker. Be careful you don't go too fast or you'll need to reset and start over. 
I'll zoom in here so you can see that the platform and the marker are lined up about as close as I'm going to be able to get them. With the dynamic platform at the correct slope, I'll set a fixed pillar that we can build from. As before, I'll elevate a piece of flooring, extend it out over the side, nudge a pillar out from underneath it and snap it into the ground. I don't want my monorail station to be on the same angle as the rail, which means I need to build the rail independent of the station. To do this, I'm going to set a couple pieces of flooring where I want the floor of my monorail station to be, which will ensure that when I place the rail, it'll not be able to set too high. I'll place a duplicate of the slope pillar next to where I want the rail to start and ensure that it's set in the cliff face so that one side of the pillar is exposed and we're able to snap off it later. I'll go below the monorail station to set the first piece of monorail line. I'll select a 16 stud long piece of flooring and aim off the slope pillar so that the flooring is on the same angle. I'll nudge it into place while sliding my cursor down the pillar until it's highlighted green and not in the way of the station floor. And then I can snap it in place. With the first piece set, it's the fun job of running rail for 700 meters. At this point, you can build out your road or rail and I'll see you at the other end where I'll show you how to set down your landing point. Now that the monorail has reached the other end, you can see it turned out to be pretty close to the marker. I would have liked it to be a meter or two higher, but considering how far away it started, I think this is pretty good. Now that the line is secure at both ends, I'll quickly remove the elevator while giving a shout out to Haskins, whose design I used. It's an excellent elevator and I have a more suitable place to put it in my desert biome. If you're interested in how to build it, I'll link his video in the description. Now that I have a clean work area, I want to build a monorail station at this end. Since I want it to be level and not at the same slope as the line, the first thing to do is transfer over the monorail direction to a flat location. You'd also do this if you plan on building a road and want it to be on level ground at this end. I'll start by setting down several foundation blocks to ensure the area is flat. I'll set a pillar on the monorail line to raise the height and then I'll put a couple pieces of flooring so that the end is above the foundation. I'll snap two foundation pieces on the end and break the flooring so the foundations drop down onto the flat base in the same direction as the monorail line. Now we do the same as we did at the dry valley end. We set a block and a piece of flooring so we can see underneath it. Select the pillar while setting the crosshair on the bottom of the flooring and nudge over and snap the pillar into the ground to give us a level starting point. I'll extend out and snap another pillar to this one so I have something low enough to set the foundation from. I'll select a large foundation block for the base of the monorail station and as before, I'll place the cursor on the pillar while nudging over and adjusting up and down the pillar until it sits just above the monorail line and is highlighted green. I'll snap it in place. From here, you can build whatever you like, so I'll see you in a few seconds for a finished walkthrough. I'm a bit of a minimalist, so it's a simple design, but this fits in well with a small beach village. It'll also give me room to put in a lighthouse next door, now that I need a new home for my village beacon. This is the basics of how you can change slope for monorails and roads. For those of you who are interested, I'll show you the monorail car I build. It's not the fanciest or best, but it's simple and it works. And when Lego glitches out and it gets stuck or disappears, it's fast and easy to replace. I start with a 16 by 16 large dynamic foundation and make sure it's centered on the monorail line. I head underneath and using a piece of 16 by 2 flooring, I'll snap it to the underside one space away from the line so it doesn't lock it in place. Add another piece of flooring underneath the first one and repeat the process on the other side of the line so that there are four spaces between the sets of flooring. Add another large dynamic foundation to the bottom so that it lines up with the top one and forms a sandwich. Head back up top, and with the large thruster selected, add two on each the top and the bottom foundations, making sure they're evenly spaced. Repeat the process on the other side of the foundation for the returning direction. The next step is a personal preference. Often, when I log back into LEGO Fortnite, my monorail cars would be stuck to the track and I'd have to destroy and rebuild them. I add a piece of flooring to the car so I can push it to one side, giving a two-space gap from the railing on that side. I take a piece of railing and place it against the foundation and nudge it over so that it only leaves three spaces wide for the rail to run through. 
just make sure you're not touching the rail when you snap it in place or it'll mess everything up and you'll have to start over again. I repeat the process on the other end, but on the opposite side, so the car sits on a slight diagonal. Since I've been doing this, I haven't had my car stuck to the track once. I'm not sure it's because of this or the stability fixes, but it's an easy step so I keep doing it. Add a couple activation switches and change the channels for each direction and you're all set. If I need to carry more, there's room for a couple chests, but I add and remove them as needed. I highly recommend when you're building slopes that you start at the top and work down. It's much easier to sight down than up, and if your aim is off, your line or road will eventually hit the ground. If you aim too high when building up, you could miss your target completely and struggle to blend it in at the far end. If you do have to build up, here are some tips for setting it up. I've set a marker on the cliff of my desert village, and I've set several foundations as the base, except this time I've placed a 16 by 2 flooring on the bottom rather than on the top. I will connect a couple dynamic foundations on top and break out any center supporting foundations, leaving just the ends. I'll break the foundations on top of the flooring to start the slope. Similar to building down, I'll break pieces of flooring one at a time until the dynamic platforms line up with the marker. You'll notice it can be more difficult to sight along the platforms if you don't build the foundations high enough to allow room for your character to get below them. Once the slope looks good, the process for setting a fixed piece is the same as before. I hope you found this video helpful and you can use this technique in your world to simplify some of your transportation infrastructure. If you made it this far, I hope I've earned your like and subscribe. Have fun building and I look forward to seeing your new monorail systems and superhighways.